I want to thank all of you for being here this afternoon. Please help yourselves to some yummy pizza over there. There's also water. <laughs> uh, my name is Livia Newbert. I serve here as the coordinator to the ESL program. And um, today we're having the third of a series of four uh, panels, student voices uh, panels. And my colleague and I, uh, Chad Argett Singer, are very excited about this opportunity uh, because it gives our students a chance to make their voices heard and hopefully initiate change here at the college and beyond. Uh, the idea of this project that we named Student Voices is to educate people. So we want everyone to know what it means to walk in your shoes, um, your successes and your struggles, and to learn from it and, and improve from it, to grow from it. Um, we believe that it's only by educating ourselves that we can actively listen to your stories and that we can successfully respond to your needs. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first panelist, Syria Tavares. But before we do that, uh, it's Syria's birthday today. So I would like to invite all of you to sing happy birthday to Syria. In a count of three, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you to sing me happy birthday. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, my name is Syria. I'm from Cape Verde. Um, I, I have been attending BCC um, two years ago, two years, and I'm taking ESL class uh, program. Uh, the first time I'm a parent and have two children, 18 years old and 10 years old. The first time it was a struggle for me because when you are a parent, go to school and take care of children, it is a lot. But I had uh, support for my friends, I support for my family, and I say I'm going to try to come to the BCC. When I came to the BCC, it was rewarding, it was surprising because my English changed a little bit and even I see the improvement in my job because I wasn't able to speak English clear and they start to understand me. They told me, oh, your English, your English turned better. Also, it was improvement because uh, my teacher helped me a lot. They always there helped me. They put me focus on my work, they always be there for me. And also, I, I, I say it's surprising because I made a good friend. I made a friend, I treat them look like they are my children. I give them advice, they always there for me. They always help me. I know they had, they, their head is clear because they're more fresh than me, they don't have a children but they're helping me a lot. This is a good thing. I want to talk also about the resource I had here. I also, I had a help for tutoring and also I've been applied for Quest students. They helped me. They accepted me to be applied for Quest students. It was really helpful. And every time I go to tutor and I had my test the next day and my test getting better. It's a good help I had. I also I want to say my English is not good at all. I'm still struggling with my writing class. And the one thing I, wanna, I want you guys to be changing the BCC, I also take a partner conversation. It is really helpful. I will recommend if the BCC can open more opportunity for more students to attend this class. Because you see the way you speak, the partner speak to you, correct your errors and it is the best thing. I'm um, thank you thank you every one of you guys to be here to listen to me. Thank you. Thank you 
and I know you're going to run off, so is there any questions we want to ask before she heads off to her birthday celebration about her experience? Questions? Anything else that you think would be helpful for faculty and staff to know about your situation in terms of how we can better support students like you? I think I need, I think because now I've been struggling in my writing class, you know, English is my second language. I've been struggling. Uh, the only thing is because sometimes I had um, a trouble in financial situation and if they anything they can help in financial situation because sometimes I can manage my time because sometimes I needed more to take sometimes class at the New Bedford. It's easy for me because I live in New Bedford to come here in Fall River. This is what kind of help I want to guys arrange this thing if it's good for me. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Kyle. Hi, my name is Kyle. I grew up in Fall River. And I've been here now for two years at BCC, four semesters. My goal for BCC is to get some help with my English. It's helped me improve and getting better. I'm getting a good education. It's challenging. It can be difficult for me to get through uh, with people in their lives. It's just hard to, hard to make it through sometimes. And the challenge, there's challenges inside, you know, who you are and then outside of who you are. And it's difficult for me. I do my best. I try. So I go to the tutoring center, who is very helpful. I use ODS, the Office for Disability Services. And I'm working on my English and my grammar. That's my goal is I want to graduate and get my dreams fulfilled. I wish that there were more deaf here on campus. And my goal is that I will also just have more interests, have more people to communicate with that share those interests and those that sign. It's difficult sometimes to have life without that. So Kyle, could I ask you to talk <laughs> maybe a little bit more about um, being deaf on a campus? Because you mentioned you wish there were more of a deaf community. For those in the audience that are not familiar. What is that like? What should we know about? I'd like to see more people use sign language and even people that can hear sign, that they, they, they use sign language not just deaf, but um, to be able to understand people's words. So I think what I hear you talking about is what many students have also expressed, that they feel like they're the only one in their class. So last time we talked a little bit about being the only adult learner and looking around and feeling like I'm the only one who has kids. Um, I'm the only one who comes directly from work. Um, so would you say that that is similar to your experience that you feel like when you look around you're the only one in that class? Yes. Is there anything? I do. It's difficult. It's really not, it, it's not easy. So what else could BCC do, either faculty, staff, or students, that might make you feel a stronger connection to our campus? Are there little things or big things? Oh, that's a hard, hard to answer. Um, just to hang in there with us. I think Have that's patience. Good. That's good. I mean, it's part of life, and we've kind of accepted it. So I, I think we might all be able to relate to that a little bit, that there are things that we just chalk up, chalk up to being part of life and accepting. So think about some questions for Kyle, but I'm going to have um, Angel talk a little about her experience, and then maybe we can kind of have more of a dialogue um, questions for either of them. Hello. 
So my name is Angel Burge, and I started at BCC in fall of 2006 in the animal science program. After leaving a very abusive marriage, I realized that I was going to be the main provider in the home, and I wanted to edu an education so bad to show my boys that I was strong enough to move past all odds. One of the other things I dealt with is I deal with is an invisible disability because I suffer from um, depression and anxiety. I learned about different supports here at ODS um, at BCC, such as the ODS and campus counseling and student life. As a single mom, I faced a very challenging event one of my, with one of my sons in the spring semester, which caused me to withdraw from four out of five of my classes I was in, which put me in academic um, probation. But the ODS office pushed me towards continuing, and I was able to learn that BCC would be a very safe and understanding community. Also, the counseling services here at BCC has been a huge support as I handled I, they have helped me handle all the things that come along with being a single mom and the only provider in the home. One of the struggles I faced was being an SOS, as we say, a significant older student. Often I feel inadequate in many aspects as a student, but the ODS office helps me realize that I will, I'm stronger and smarter than I, I say or think of myself. So in the fall of September of 2017, I realized that my true calling was in human services field as I was a work study and a mentor in the ODS office and I felt really successful, so I changed my major. And the last thing I would like to share is that the community here at BCC has been compassionate and supportive to me as a student and I can never say and thank you enough. And then I wanna share like one of my um, best moments as a student. So I received a letter from um, the Connections office. I'm gonna try not to cry because it's, it's really special to me. So this was after my semester with my probation. It says, Dear Angel, congratulations on an excellent, excellent academic performance during fall 2007. Your achievement is a testament to the skills, your skill and persistence. We applaud your hard work and trust Trust the success you have achieved will serve you serve as a foundation for their even greater accomplishments in the future. Though there may have been bumps in the road, you push through the difficult times and are an outstanding example of what it means not to give up. Your hard work and determination resulted in a level of achievement of which you, your family, and your friends should be proud of. We wish you continued success in your academic journey here at BCC and beyond. And. Um, there's moments where I get very anxious and nervous and I read that over and over again because it's the first time I had a letter where someone acknowledged me um, as a student and getting an education outside of um, you know, high school education. So it's very important to me. And that's it. So you said a few things I would like to follow up on. Okay. And then we can open up some, some questions. So um, what is it really like to have kids and balance that, especially since I think one of your kids might be here as well. So what is that like? Because for some people in the audience, they may not have kids, so they don't quite understand, like, I have three little ones. So I, I know, like, you do work, and then you race home, and then you do work later at night. So what is it like on a day-to-day -day basis with okay. kids? So um, my... My oldest son is 18 and he's graduating from Durfee and then my youngest son is 15. And so one of my challenges is that my youngest son is in a private school in Natick. So as well as working, going to school, I travel to Natick on a weekly basis to go see him and bring him home on the weekends. And then my oldest son, um, I don't think he has a clue to what life is like for me because he just doesn't get it. Like the other day, he's like, you're going to work. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, what time are you going to be home? And I'm like, five. He's like, are you serious? This is going to be so boring without you all day. And I'm like, okay, but that's like my responsibility. So I think that I had an opportunity to bring my youngest son here a couple of weeks ago and spend the day with me. And um, he really enjoyed it. He had the opportunity to get um, some BCC swag, as he would say, <laughs> and um, meet coach Rob and uh, just see my experience. So I think he's a little more understanding to it, but he's also a little younger and not as opinionated as my oldest son. And then 
I think I'm going to steal the SOS. Okay. Because I think that's a great. So she described SOS as a significantly older student. Yes. So a similar question that I asked Kyle, what does that look like? So you mentioned before, like, you're the only one in your classroom. But are there other things that you think really stand out? Are there things that the institution does that you feel are really geared towards a 20-year-old student instead of a significantly older student? Yes. And what might be some of those? Okay. So I think that um, one of the things is, um, I think the perfect, I would love it if there was like, an, uh, first of all, a support group for like significant older students because, um, you know, like we go in classrooms and a lot of times we're the only one. And so we're sitting there and we're like, oh, you know, like, okay, um, what's the professor going to ask of me today? And I'm going to remember that from like 20 years ago. And so you always are afraid to answer questions, I, I feel, in class because you're going to be embarrassed. So I think if there was like a support group and also like maybe um, a, as uh, the student said last week, classes that were geared towards older students and like making us feel like we had a community compared to like just a traditional 20-year-old college student. So Kyle, she mentioned wanting to have a support group for the SOS population. Do you feel like there's a pretty strong support group for the deaf community here at BCC? Or is that another area we could improve upon? Yeah, it's still pretty hard though. I'm tr still trying to reach my goals with the writing and being able to speak to people, you know, and the, those who sign. It's not easy. I'm trying to understand myself and, and still get the writing down. And uh, of what I feel. I, you know, I try to be able to communicate on paper what I'm feeling to people. Good. Um, now, Angel explicitly talked about some academic challenges, so I'd love to kind of pose an, a new question to both of you. Um, thank you for sharing going through the academic dismissal process. That's not usually something people want to talk about, but we have a large population who have some stumbles and go through that process. So if you think about academically, what are some of the things that have helped you kind of overcome those challenges? Because when you withdraw from a lot of classes, lots of students would just decide, I'm going to try something different, but you, Angel, came back. Um, so for both of you, Kyle and Angel, what are some of the things that either BCC does or you wish we could have done to kind of help you when you're in that writing class and you feel like it's not going as well as you want? What are some of those academic-related supports that you think can really make or have made a difference Tutoring. for you? Tutoring? I love to hear that. <laughs> I'm voicing. Yeah. Right. Oh. <laughs> I'm, the interpreter's confused. Yeah, no, tutoring daily, or almost, but that's helped a lot, he said, is the tutoring. So I think for um, my side of it, just being able to have compassionate people on campus that are willing to like sit down and talk to you and listen to your circumstance and not just pull you as a person that dropped out of four classes, like, oh, she doesn't want to go to college anymore, and actually sit down and have the opportunity to explain it and why that happened and just the ability to know that um, BCC is aware that students are going to have moments in their lives where they're in college and they have to take a, a, a break or they have to like something just comes up so I think the ability to be able to really be able to say hey let's talk and figure out why this happened and not just assume that the students walking away what would you guys like to know from these two students or maybe if there's a student who want to share something we could do that as well since we're videotaping this I want to make sure everyone talks into the mic so we can capture that Voice, right. Um, thank you so much, Chad, Livia, and the committee for hosting the Student Voices. It's been uh, very informative for all of us here at BCC. Um, my name is Sue Bassano, and I oversee disability services here at BCC. I'd like to ask two of the student panelists what two or three tips or uh, strategies would you tell a new student coming to BCC or a student thinking of coming to BCC to help them with their uh, transition to college? What are two or three things you would tell a new or prospective student? Uh, 
That's a tough one. It's hard for a new person because they need to know where their classes are, so showing them that and, and they've got, you know, the, the responsibilities of figuring out who their teachers are. And maybe talk with them about what their goals are and how they want to be successful and then to find a place for them to go. So I have a little story that I haven't shared with anybody really because I, I just remembered it. Um, when I came to go to BCC, I was really frustrated and stressed out because I didn't understand financial aid and I didn't understand how to get admitted and I didn't understand all these things. So I came into the G building. I was trying to talk to people, get some information. No one had time to talk. So I just sat on the couches and I started tearing up and I was like, this is not going to happen for me. And um, a woman from the financial aid office that was in a higher position than a financial aid counselor saw me and came over and took the time to talk to me and ask me what was going on. And from that moment on, I had answers and she directed me in all the different things I needed to do. So I think part of the things that would be helpful is having like that one-on-one -on -one opportunity to talk to a student if you feel that student's struggling with either financial aid or just making that step to come into school um, I don't really think that people always realize how hard it is to take that first step or how hard it is to walk on campus that first day, you know, and um, I would say that's probably uh, the best explanation for my side of things. Any other questions? That's a really hard one, actually. I'll just let them. Any other questions you'd like to ask? Okay, hold on. Hi, um, my name is Kelly, and uh, mostly I'm a writing tutor here, but I also uh, teach college success seminar. Um, and I've been interested to, to hear about, um, from students who are first in their families to go to college, um, I hear a lot about how hard it is sometimes to talk to faculty. Um, I, I'm not a first generation student myself. My parents worked for a college, and so I kind of grew up on a college campus. And so for me, that's kind of my native land in some ways. Um, but when I you know, but when I teach students who are just coming in for the first time, um, it's sometimes hard for me to imagine how difficult it is when I ask them for a class assignment to go talk to a professor, because that's one of the things that people have to do. Um, do you guys have any suggestions for like how we as instructors can make it easier for you guys to approach us? Like how do we be more approachable and less intimidating? That's a good question. We have to try hard enough to be confident. Like I try to be able to approach people. I try not to be afraid. So I'm not sure what other people always feel. But the confidence, you know, just to try the best you can and not to be afraid. And to listen to what we have to say. So I'm probably a little different than the average student when it comes to this because I purposely stay after class the first class I introduce myself I make sure they understand that I'm probably the oldest student in the class and then I want to be able to communicate on a weekly basis about what's going on with my assignments so um, that's probably because I am an older student but um, there have been some incidences where I was like really anxious because maybe the, the professor wasn't what I thought or I was nervous how they were gonna react to me coming up and so but I always make a point to show them. And I also find that um, for me personally, that if I do that, I'm less intimidated about if something comes up and I have to communicate with my teacher, you know. Would you both say that you've got a handful of faculty or staff that you feel connected to? So if you found yourself in a situation where you're frustrated and G building and tearing up, do you now both feel like you've got one or two people that you could go to and say, I'm frustrated with this, can you help me? Yes, I do have a lot of help. Okay, good, because I, I think you both talked about some staff that you've connected with that will help make navigating these processes a little easier. So um, another takeaway is potentially making sure people get connected and have that person. Yeah, I've had people that help me where to go or what, what I need to do, people who know what, have responsibilities, know what to do, I can follow what they tell me to do. And I just keep going. 
And keep going and don't stop. Just keep trying. That's good. Any other questions? What are you interested in knowing? Hello, uh, my name is Laura. I'm from the Connections Program. And I just wanted to know, what is one piece of, uh, well, what is one thing you would have liked to have known when you first started here at BCC that maybe it took some time to learn? Um, you know, think, thinking back to that day you first stepped on campus, what is that one or even two pieces of information that you would have like loved to have known way back then? And since we have some students in the audience, I see taking notes. If you have anything you'd like to add, we'd love to incorporate you. This can be a really interactive session. So feel free to think of that as, as well. And if you have thoughts, we'd love to get your feedback too. Um, so I think like being able to like have a better idea of how the campus is laid out. Um, one of the things I've noticed since President Douglas has been here is the flags. Those are really, really, really important. Um, those weren't here when I started in fall 2016. They were not here. And so I was like, all right, so how do I get here and how do I get here? So I think that would be like a huge, huge um, improvement and the flags make a big difference, I feel like. And then the second thing probably would be um, learning how to figure out where events are when they're happening. And how do you manage to get to an event if you have this, this, and this going on? Um, I find that BCC has a lot of um, student life, and it's great. Um, but g being able to juggle, juggle that as long as, with your classes and your job and your children and all that stuff. You know, there's a lot of times where I don't get to participate because I just can't make it. And that's kind of, you know, a part of me that I, I wish I could do more of that because to be 100% honest, I missed out on the whole college you know, 20 year old thing. So trying to make up for a little bit of that. I just want to continue in college. Keep uh, showing my parents what I can do as well so that they'll be proud of me. Just keep going. And I'm just doing the best that I can. And that's, I think, the goal. Anyone in the audience want to chime in and things? they think BCC could do better, or you wish you had known? No, that's okay. Well, so I'm gonna ask the panel to stick around for a few minutes if you have questions you wanna ask maybe individually. Um, this is our third or fourth, or four sessions. So we have one on Tuesday, May 22nd at 12 noon. We're gonna be over in C building, so the other side of campus, but there'll still be free pizza. Um, so, and we'll have a different round of panelists, so if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the student experiences, please play in the join us then. There's no excuses, there's no classes or anything going on. Um, and if you did not sign our clipboard, we'd love you to. Our pizza is funded through a strategic planning committee, so they want to know how many people came, so they'll give us more pizza for next time. So thank you very much for coming. Please go out and enjoy the beautiful weather that we're having, and have a great afternoon.